Hey again, today we're going to be talking more misidentification and this time we're going to talk about Enneagram 7, the enthusiast, and Enneagram 9, the peacemaker. Now you can imagine one of the main similarities between these types is that they tend to be positive people. They want to see th things through rose-colored glasses and they want everything to be um, lighthearted, they want things to be fun, they want life to be positive. Um, but but beneath that and the motivations that cause them to desire that are pretty different. And even the emotional temperature of these types feels very different in real life. Um, actually, recently we, I just had a visit from a friend from out of town and it was such a cool opportunity to observe this in real time because her husband is a nine and my husband is a seven. So it was kind of cool to see them together and recognize some of the outward similarities and some of the um, inward and outward differences. So when we look at the motivations of seven and nine, we see that they're both kind of escapists, but to different corners of the earth or different corners of themselves. Um, sevens tend to move outward into the world in order to escape uh, negativity, pain, even sometimes just boringness. Sevens abhor dullness and boring, stagnant uh, things in life. But seven moves, seven moves, outward into the world and into experience. Nine, on the other hand, tends to move inward to the self, which is why nine is a withdrawn type. Um, inward to the self in this place that sort of shuts down and is self-forgetting. Um, sometimes we can look at nine as um, a sponge in that when they are in a situation that they feel could possibly cause conflict as the peacemaker, um, they tend to say, whatever works for everyone else, um, I'm going to step back and not have any preferences just so things can remain calm and peaceful. Um, nines seek more than anything else for tranquility and for um, lack of antagonism or conflict. Um, and because of this, actually, nines tend to um, really connect with the natural world and tend to have a pretty strong spiritual peace in them, even if they have, as we just said, treated that spiritual peace with self-forgetting. Um, it's there, and I think that um, along with that anger tendency that nines tend to suppress, sometimes we can see them do the same thing with um, sort of that intuitive spiritual part of them. And actually, even when nines are disintegrating to six, we see them gravitate towards things of natural logic because it feels peaceful. It feels like this makes sense. All is well with the world. Um, but when we see nine move to six and stress, we see them come out of the body and into the head in this overthinking, overthinking, overthinking type of way. Um, there have been many times actually that I have um, sat with people who are trying to determine between six and nine. I know we're talking about seven and nine, but um, that can play into this mistyping of seven and nine because of the six wing possibility with seven. Um, and I've seen people sit in that um, process of trying to figure out, am I a nine disintegrating to six or am I a six? And I have to say a lot of times it is nine disintegrating to six and being in this place of mental turmoil. Um, and how we get back to that conclusion and answer that question, again, is motivations. Um, as a nine, the motivation of that um, would be this desire for peace and harmony. And sometimes that is even in the form of logic for things to make sense, for the world to make sense. Um, we also see this big temperament difference between nine and seven. And that is this desire for nine to get small and this desire for seven to get big. Um, and that's generally under stress for both of them. So as we were just talking about, nines can get small when they're in a space that feels like conflict is about to happen or in a space. Um, and honestly, a lot of times that is not even true to life, that conflict's going to happen. But I think nines have that sense um, of needing to be small to prevent conflict. Um, that can look a lot like that lack of preference that we um, see in nine sometimes, that even if they're angry, tendency to be expressing their anger through silent stubbornness instead of 
um, communicating it. Sevens, bigness, as we were talking about, can uh, under stress is this feeling of being trapped in dormancy, trapped in dullness, trapped in stagnancy, and needing to get out. Um, I've seen sevens get really big um, when they're feeling stressed or when they're feeling held down and they need to, um, they feel the need to escape it. So these are some of the main differences between the enthusiast and the peacemaker. Um, there are plenty of other things we could talk about. And of course, I think it's important always to step back and remember instincts. Um, we tend to look at seven a lot and say, seven's always extroverted and nine's always introverted. But we need to remember that instincts color this picture completely um, in, a way, in a way that um, really negates stereotypes. So when we look at a self-preservation seven, we're gonna see that that seven's a little bit more withdrawn, a little bit more introverted. It makes me think of um, sometimes, not all times, but sometimes the ENTP version of seven, um, which sometimes thinks it's an introvert. Uh, I believe ENTP is called the most introverted extroverted type. And um, those sevens are very much in their heads and they do express themselves outwardly, especially in frustration and that bigness thing. Um, but there is more of that cerebralness that kind of lends itself to integration to five. Um, on the other side, we have nines who are a little bit more people oriented and a little bit less withdrawn, especially when we look at the SO and SX varieties of nine. I mean, I know social first nines who still, because of that social instinct, feel the need to contribute, but it's definitely in more of a self-effacing way, in more of a, I think this, or maybe this, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, sort of way that kind of still puts the self in a backseat and says that um, they don't want to cause conflict with their opinion, but that SO first nine is still going to want to contribute. Um, those are some of the main differences between Enneagram 7, the enthusiast, and Enneagram 9, the peacemaker. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below um, or to shoot me an email. There are also more resources at the Enneagram Girl blog about both of these types. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>